welcome to a new episode of the Straight Wrestling Voices of the Indies podcast. I'm your host, Morbo, and with me, as always, everyone's favorite US independent wrestling fan, Sebastian. As always, thank you very much for the introduction, Morbo, and welcome to this week's episode of Straight Wrestling Voices of the Indies. And our guest today is a real veteran of independent wrestling in the Southeast, in the Midwest, in the area around St. Louis. And he's also been a part of the 60 karat gold weekend of this year in Germany uh, in this month uh, on the date of the recording. And we are very happy to have him as our guest today. And with this, welcome King Sword Slayer. Welcome Derek Neal. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks, Morbo. Thanks, uh, Sebastian, for having me on and talking about my career and stuff today. I really appreciate it. So, Derek, for the people who don't know who you are, who is Derek Neal? Uh, 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 Derek Neal, as far as uh, who I am as a wrestler, um, I, I really uh, try to channel that, um, the wrestler from the Wayback Machine, you know, like from, from the days of the territories, you know, like, uh, like mid South or, or world-class uh, championship wrestling. Um, even to, you know, uh, of the guy, Jen, the guy, Jen wrestlers of all Japan, um, when it was in its heyday, um, that's the kind of wrestler I am. Um, you know, as far as like, uh, more of a character is kind of, it's kind of the guy you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to try at the bar, you know? Can you tell us how did you get into wrestling as a fan and also what fascinates you about wrestling? Um, for me, um, I, now I got into wrestling when I was young. My, uh, my grandfather um, was the one who introduced me to professional wrestling. Um, he was a big fan of uh, old NWA wrestling, um, primary, uh, primarily in my area of the United States, uh, promoter Nick Goulis for the NWA. Um, He had the TV um, locked down in this area. So, um, you know, that's, that's primarily what he watched. And then, you know, as the, uh, the future of the, I guess, as the, uh, I guess you could say it would be as the future of the business changed during his time, you know, he, he really adapted to WWF once it become more mainstream. Um, and that's, that's how I got into it was through that. And uh, and WCW, um, and then uh, as far as like you know wanting to be a wrestler, you know I, I pretty much knew it five or six years old. You know that's th this is what I wanted to do. So uh, so I began uh, began training actually um, two weeks before I turned 17 years old. Can you tell us where does your nickname Kings Road Slayer come from? Uh, as far as the nickname itself, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's because, you know, I, I love Kings road wrestling. Um, I love the storytelling aspect. I love the athleticism of it. Um, and going back, you know, and going back to now, it's a little bit different compared to like, um, I think, you know, wrestling here in the U S I mean, the guy gens were kind of looked at as bad guys, I'm sure. But, uh, that was another thing I loved about wrestling too, as far as growing up and what kind of draw me to it also is kind of, you know, the, the the age old tale of good versus evil. You know, I, I think it really created stories and characters and uh, created moments that uh, fans would, you know, remember for a lifetime. Um, but as far as the moniker, it, it's, uh, it's basically from my road, uh, from my love of Kings road wrestling and my biggest influences um, as a pro wrestler, uh, you know, guys like Stan Hansen, uh, Bam Bam, Terry Gordy, uh, Janiki Rotenryu, you know, Jumbo Saruta. You know, those guys were, you know, very, I think, a very important piece of of what Kings Road Wrestling is. And those guys have heavily influenced me and in how I carry myself in the ring. How would you describe your style of wrestling and what is unique about the way that you wrestle? Um, I would now my style, I would say, like I said, I would say is more, uh, it is kind of a Kings Road based uh, Southern style. And it's more of more of a brawling and power. Um, as far as the way that, um, the way that I perform in the ring. Um, and I think what makes me a little bit unique is that I'm believable. Uh, I think, I, I think what I do in the ring is convincing, you know, I, I've seen it on the look of fans faces, uh, certain things I do in that ring. I've, I've seen a fan's face grimace or give a look of shock 
and you know and really make them question you know is that guy in pain you are from kentucky how would you describe the local wrestling scene there um really uh there's there's really not much of a of a local uh scene where i'm from um now um i i we have like an athletic commission in this state that kind of governs wrestling and boxing and mixed martial arts. Um, so you had to, you have to have a license to actually um, be a professional wrestler in the state of Kentucky. So starting out for me, you know, going just kind of rewinding back here to when I started due to my age, I actually had to start in Tennessee because the, the state government uh, did not govern rest, professional wrestling in any aspect. And in Kentucky, you have to be 18 years old. Um, but as far as like the way that the landscape of the professional wrestling scene in in the state of Kentucky looks, it's kind of it's kind of went down a little bit. Um, I, I would I would kind of talk a lot of that up to the pandemic. Um, when the COVID pandemic happened, a lot of promotions did close, and um, I could probably only think of three or four. Well, I take that back. Three to five that that uh, that run in Kentucky on a regular basis anymore. And I would say before the pandemic, there were probably maybe twelve to fifteen promotions. So um, for me, I, I I travel a lot, you know, um, to other to other regions of the country. As someone from Kentucky, you often wrestle in Tennessee, Alabama. Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, and so on. So would you say that the Southeast and the Midwest are both home regions for you when it comes to wrestling? Oh, yes, I, I would say so. The, these are places that I, that I regularly frequent. Um, I may go to the Northeast region of the country every once in a while, but I'm, I'm predominantly Midwest and Southeast based. So yeah, I would, I would say those are home areas for me. One match that really stands out as an unusual one is the one against the Boogeyman at the World Wrestling Alliance oh. <laughs> History History 60 return to Evansville in 2018. What can you tell us about this match? Um, that one really stands out in my mind just because, uh, you know, being who Boogeyman is and the type of match it was, it, it was definitely nothing that um, I experienced before up until that point of my career. Um, it was, uh, the, the only way that I could, that I could put it into words, it would be like a, like a live action nightmare, I guess, if you will. Um, but, um, it was, and, and what was great about that was like, um, the Evansville Coliseum. Now that used to be years ago, that used to be a stop in the uh, Memphis territory, uh, you know, like Jerry Lawler and, and Bill Dundee. Um, that's, you know, back in the, uh, I would say between the, uh, the seventies to the nineties in the U S. Well, uh, possibly I think is around the time frame that that town was a stop, but um, throughout the 2000s and stuff, it was primarily like um, like a hardcore and deathmatch uh, scene as far as the town there. Um, so it was it was really interesting to to see the crowd get into the type of match we had because it's it's to it was a total 180 compared to what they're used to. Um. But, uh, but I mean, it was a lot of fun and enjoyable and just, I think it was more or less just because it was something different for me. You just refer to starting and wrestling at the age of 17 and you had your first match that is listed on cage match on January 4th of 2004. You would go on to have some more matches in 2004 and the next matches you could find on cage match were in 2007. And then in 2008, where you started to have more matches. What are your memories of the time that you started out in wrestling? Um, my uh, my memory they they were good ones. Um, I, you know, I, I luckily got to be like around a lot of veterans um, during my time, and uh, like it, it's it's not listed on Cage Match, but my but my actual first professional wrestling match was in February of 2003. Um, for it's a very it's a very small promotion that was uh, in northern Tennessee, just above Nashville. They haven't been in business in several years, um, but I, I worked with the local promoter there. But but in 2004, uh, that I believe that's on Cage Match. I believe that would probably be USWO. Um, and th for me, that was a great learning experience because they had local TV at the time. Um, so, you know, I, I got to, I got to learn to, to, uh, work, uh, you know, local television 
as far as uh you know that's where i filmed my very first vignettes i've ever done or promos or um you know even even actual you know tv matches um and i got to work with uh the promoter there uh tony falk um he really helped out a lot of us younger guys um in this area and you know and tony was you know tony is kind of a of a legend himself you know here in the united states um you know he worked for he worked for the Von Ericks and world class. And, you know, he worked in Memphis. Um, he was, uh, I think he was Jeff Jarrett's first ever professional wrestling match. He helped train Jarrett. Um, he helped out Austin, uh, Steve Austin in Dallas. Um, I think that's even mentioned in, in Steve's book. Um, Mick Foley mentions him in, in his book, uh, Shawn Michaels. Um, it's just kind of, it's kind of a sad story, but he was actually on the hillside of the dressing room in Puerto Rico the night that Brody was killed. Um, so like he's, he's really been around the business for a very long time. And, um, you know, he also helped guys, um, like, uh, you know, give guys chances to work like Chuck Taylor, Ricochet. Um, but you know, being being there, uh, it was a lot of good times for me there. As far as the the veterans, I got to be around and and how much I got to learn. Um, and during that time too, which was an interesting time, that was the early TNA days when TNA was running the Nashville Fairgrounds every week. So you know, he would also get a lot of a lot of talent coming in from from TNA like on a regular basis. So there's always great opportunities to learn all the time. Um, which I really appreciated a lot. How would you say did independent wrestling, or maybe even wrestling in general, change since the time that you started in the early 2000s? Oh man, uh, exponentially. Uh, um, and you know, it's uh, there's a lot. There's a lot more. I feel there's a lot more of a market for it now uh, than it, than it was. Um, you know, it, it, we, we've kind of joked around, I've kind of joked around about it with guys I come up with. We kind of call the 2000s like uh, the dark ages of independent wrestling. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to get booked in other places. Uh, you know, and you, you didn't have, you know, I was, when I broke into the professional wrestling business at that time, um, at the independent level, it was, uh, you know, it, it was right before social media. Um, so, you know, we didn't have that at first. Um, I remember getting uh, booked in some places. I would, I'd mail a resume, an eight by ten, and a DVD, and hope it reached a promoter, and hope I got a call. Um, but now, you know, it's it's. Um, I feel that it's much easier to reach out, and you know, you got other avenues to to push to push who you are as a wrestler and your brand uh, through social media, YouTube, as far as for matches or IWTV. Um, thriller TV, Fight Plus, I believe is what it's called. Uh, thriller now, I believe is what it's called. Um, it's uh, I, I, it's it's boomed a lot much more, and uh, there's a there's a lot more of it out there now. And there's and then for the for the wrestlers, it's a lot easier to get noticed now, I think, uh, than it was uh, coming up in in the 2000s. In 2014, you started working for probably the most known company you have appeared for by this point, IWA Mid-South. You stood in the ring with known people in today's independent wrestling scene like John Ray Murdoch or Reed Bentley. What kind of influence did the time in IWA Mid-South have on your career? Um, I, think it, I think it helped me a great deal, honestly. Um, and I think it kind of helped me uh, bring out another side of me as far as uh, you know, showing grit as a wrestler in the ring. Um, I, uh, cause my, my very first, uh, storyline that I was, uh, put in with, uh, uh, Ian put me with, uh, mean Mitch page. Who's a very tough guy, very tough customer. Um, but he was also, uh, like, uh, I, I, he was like one of the staples of IWA mid South since it started up. Um, and which I think for me, that was the, that was the perfect guy to put me with, um, to where, you know, it, it could, it could get me some notoriety in front of the fan base. I think that helped me a great deal. Um, and then uh, I think as time went on, um, I, I I did that there. And then I think I took a little bit of time off from IWA and then I came back again. And then uh, that's kind of when I was doing stuff with, uh, with, with Murdoch and Bentley. 
I want to say it's probably around 2016. Um, but, uh, but during that time too, that was really good because, um, I got to, you know, I got to team with like a team with Mitch Ryder some, uh, that's where, that's where Matt Warner cut his teeth and, you know, kind of started to really, you know, get started was, uh, you know, IWA mid South, um, you know, we got to work with, uh, with, uh, Todd Morton, you know, um, which, you know, Todd mentored me a little bit before my IWA mid South run, uh, through another promotion he booked. Um, but, uh, but, you know, getting, to, getting to be with those guys, um, you know, that, that was a, that was a lot of fun. Honestly, it was a lot of fun. I felt like it was a pretty good time for me in my career. And I think it really kind of, kind of gave me some, uh, some steam on the independence. <laughs> In 2018, you first appeared for another promotion in Indiana called uh, Paradigm Pro Wrestling, and you have been appearing for it ever since and every year, including 2023. What does PPW mean to you, and how would you describe uh, PPW to all listeners who haven't heard of the promotion before? What is special about PPW? Um, I, I think uh, what's special about them, I think they try to they try to really think out the box um, as far as as what you know, as far as wrestling goes, um, with, with, you know, some of the styles of matches they have, like, um, like for, for an example, I participated in one of these, they did one called terminal combat. So the way it starts in this match is, uh, there, there's actually a countdown, um, and they usually play it on a screen and it, it's, uh, it's five minutes of UWFI rules. And then if a, um, a knockout or a tap out has not happened within that five minutes. Then it goes to anything goes until there's a winner. So that means weapons can be used. You know, I mean, you can use anything, including a kitchen sink, I guess, you know, if you wanted to, um, I, I I've always thought that was kind of a neat concept for, for a match. Um, but yeah, that's what I like about them. I think they try, they try to think outside the box a bit. Um, I participated in their, uh, very first, uh, uh, UWFI Grand Prix. Um, and that was against, uh, Eric Stevens in the first round. Um, and, uh, as far as I know, I think technically, I think that was the first UWFI, uh, rules match on United States soil in 25 years. Um, and then from there, that's, that's pr predominantly what I've done for them is, uh, UWFI rules bouts. And um, I actually, I have another event coming up with them. Uh, I just got announced yesterday for that. I, I'll be performing for, um, for, you know, Paradigm on April 20th in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. The promotion I first saw you wrestle for on IWTV is one from Alabama, and it's New South Wrestling. You did not only wrestle for New South, but... Between uh, 2020 and 2021, you've been a uh, three-time New South champion. Do you feel like this title maybe has also put you on the map in a way or put you on the map even more in independent wrestling? I think so, absolutely. Um, you know, I, as far as like my, my start with them, it, my, my start, I, I did like a tryout match with them in late 2018. And then, um, then I started there in 2019 in the spring, I want to say, um, because I, I had a broken thumb um, around that time, I think. Yeah, I did. I had a broken left thumb around that time, so I was kind of, you know, on the mend. And then uh, coming back, um, you know, they, they built me, you know, um, as a, you know, I was kind of in the mid card mostly of 2019. And I felt what really catapulted me with New South, and it's kind of weird timing too, so you had the, you know, they, they do the Haas tournament as, uh, and the Haas stands for heart of the Southern 16. So it's just a 16 man tournament, two nights. Um, and I won that tournament in 2020. Um, and in that, in the final, it was, um, and, and, well, and throughout the tournament, I, I wrestled Baron black in the first round, uh, Mance Warner in the second round. And then in the finals, it's a four-way, you know, elimination style match. Um, and I was in there with uh, Chris Crunk, A.R. Fox, and Kurt Stallion. And um, it come down to me and Stallion in the end. And then I won the tournament. And then uh, I gained a little steam. Uh, they, you know, IWTV did uh, do a premiere of that the next week. And it, I felt like that kind of helped me pick up steam a little bit. And then, you know, COVID happened. and. 
kind of shut the world down there for a little while. Um, and then going into the summer, um, Alabama was beginning to let professional wrestling happen again with restrictions, of course. And, uh, and I, I, uh, took the title from Cabana Mandana anniversary five in August of 2020. And yeah, I really think, uh, my, my three championship, uh, reigns there as new South, uh, champion. I really think it, it boosted me a lot. Um, cause during that time, you know, I, you know, I, I, Dan, you know, Dan is a, I feel is a very well-known independent wrestler in the United States, Cabana man, Dan. And then, um, you know, we got to carry our feud even into uh, WrestleMania weekend at uh, you know, family reunion, um, for IWTV in Tampa, Florida that year and had a really uh, solid match there. And then, and then it led into, you know, into, um, a storyline between Adam Priest and myself, um, which is, you know, something that, um, the way that we did that, I, I'm really proud of how we did that. Um, I thought we told a very good story and, uh, we had very good chemistry together in the ring. Um, and it, it made for something that, uh, that when I go to these retinal shows, you know, I wrestle for retinal pro wrestling. Now, um, a lo- some of the older new South fans go and they still talk about that. So, um, it, it makes me feel like we did something right there. Another title you are associated with is, of course, the TWE title. And it is not only the title itself, but TWE in general. We had people here on this podcast before, like uh, Daniel Simmons or Darian Bankson, uh, who only had like the highest of uh, praise for you. What does having held the TWE title like you did, but also TWE in general, mean to you? Um, I, I really think it's a special place. Um... It's uh, and and one thing that I really liked was um, I felt like um, after uh, you know the IWTV Uncharted Territory um, season four come through there, I think it really put eyes on a on a lot of on a lot of uh, guys who that that regularly work for TWE that that got a chance on Uncharted, and you know and it got to go fans that were you know, that would only watch through the app that, you know, there's, there's this other company here in Chattanooga and it, I think it piqued interest and, and, um, you know, you got a lot of young hungry talent there that wants to learn and get better. Um, I think Jaden Newman's a great trainer, um, you know, with his, with his students that he has and the, uh, the storytelling there is, uh, it's really good. It's really old school. I feel, you know, it's kind of, it's got a, like a real old school Southern base flavor to it. Um, as far as like my, my run as TW champion, um, I, I really enjoyed that a lot. Had a lot of good matches there. Uh, you know, I know, uh, I, a lot of people talk about Darian Bingston, but that's when we were, uh, doing the undisputed thing. And, uh, what, what happened with that actually was, uh, I, in April of last year, I, uh, I tore my MCL, um, in a match with, um, Rip Bison, uh, for uh, grind pro wrestling in, in Massachusetts. And, uh, so I, uh, so they ended up, uh, they ended up making some changes to where, you know, he would, Darian would eventually get the title, but I never lost. So I come back to the challenge for that undisputed. But, um, as far as my defenses, like I had some really good ones with like, uh, with Jaden Newman. Um, I did one with uh cruel, which was a very interesting match. Uh, Eric Royal, uh, another, you know, another big guy that can really go in the ring. Um, I, I really got to work with a lot, of, a lot of really good talent, um, during, during that championship run. TWE, I also uh, watched and enjoyed your match against Darian Banks live, and uh, this is how we got in contact. And I remember you how you told me about uh, you would be at the second show of a relatively new promotion called Retinal Wrestling on SCI weekend in Birmingham, Alabama. You already mentioned them. Fast forward to 2024, and you have been a part of every Retinal show that took place so far. How do you feel about being a part of how Retina developed and grew since last July? Um, I I think it's I I think it's uh, grown a little bit um, since last year. Um, our our first event uh, for Retinal was um, 
in April of 2023. Um, they do have it on, I, I believe they have the full show on their YouTube channel on the first one. And uh, I was uh, the first main event for the company. It was, it was me and uh beef uh, Norris, Norris Garvin in that match. And that was a, that was a slobber knocker. <laughs> uh, we, we beat the crap out of each other pretty good um in that match but uh but yeah i I feel like it's it's slowly coming around Uh, people are starting to talk about it a little bit more um it kind of reminds me of um it's kind of got a little bit of that southern underground pro feel to it a little bit um with the type of venues and and the style of show that they put on um so um i think i think it's really got some legs and it's really especially this year it's it's really starting to get some attention so um I think uh, in the future, if if we can, if they can keep things uh, at the same heading, I, I really think that we can gain some steam this year um, with Retinal Pro Wrestling. When we talk about promotions you appear for regularly, we have to talk about St. Louis Anarchy as well. Um, not only are you the current Gateway Heritage title holder, but you also won the Dingo Invitational Tournament in 2022, beating no other than uh, Thomas Shire and ACH in the final. How important is this title for you and how important was winning the Dingo Invitational for you? Now, for me, I, I think as far as the this championship, I uh, to me, uh, the, the Gateway Heritage Championship is probably the most important championship that, that I've ever held in my career up to this point. Um, now, as far as the Dingo, that was uh, that that was a grueling weekend <laughs> for sure. Uh, cause it was, it was, I believe it was a 24 man tournament. Um, and, um, I, I worked, I had, uh, Anakin Murphy in the first round. Who's, um, I don't know if you're really, are you familiar with him? Yes. We regularly see him on TWE. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, really, really good. Yeah. I think he's, I think he's a young talent with a lot of, prof- with a lot of potential. Um, we had a really good match and then I had, um, Add Cam Jackson the next night uh, is also a St. Louis based guy. Um, and then uh, Matt Fitchett in the next round. Um, that was, that was really tough. Uh, I think Matt Fitchett is uh, probably one of the best in the world, in my opinion. Um, very talented wrestler. And then uh, just getting in there with guys like, like ACH and, and Shire in the final, um, you know, I, you know, I say, I feel the same about Shire. I think Shire, Shire should be everywhere. He should be all around the world in my opinion. And, um, you know, and I, I think, you know, ACH is one of the most complete professional wrestlers that I have ever been in the ring with in my entire career. Um, so it was, it was really good to, to be able to be, you know, in the ring with, with that kind of talent. Um, as far as my, my run, um, I've never had a run like this in my career at all. Uh, not, not to, not to this magnitude. Um, I have actually, since my debut at St. Louis Anarchy in July of 2021, I have never had my shoulders pinned to the mat. I have never submitted since I've been there. Um, so the, this, I feel for me, it's like the run of a lifetime, honestly. And, uh, and the, the title itself, as, uh, I feel it's the most important championship I've held in my career. Speaking of tournaments, you've also been a part of the Scenic City Invitational in 2021. You had a match in the first round against Eric Royal. What are your thoughts on this match, especially given that, in my opinion, Eric is uh, quite similar to you, also being a powerhouse, also being a heavyweight uh, wrestler, who's uh, also known as a veteran, like regional independent wrestler who was very popular among his peers. Um, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, I felt that, uh, that Eric and myself, well, we had a lot of chemistry in the ring. Um, and I think that we, we carry ourselves very similar. We think a lot alike, um, and, and the way that we do things in the ring. Um, I, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that match a lot. And then, I felt that um that and that match was really good I felt and then um I think when it uh when we got a little bit down the road whenever I was TWE champion and I defended my title against them I think the match we had was even better um but 
I, I think I really think uh, Eric and I ha- have a very good chemistry in the ring. You are not only active in the southeast and in the Midwest. You also appeared for Pro Wrestling Grind in 2022 and 2023. You already said that at one of these matches your injury happened. But apart from that, maybe it's a bit it's a bit hard. But uh, apart from that, how was the experience overall there? I really love that place a lot. Um, it has um, it has a special energy to it. It's uh, it's almost kind of like. Um, Kind of reminds me of like uh, of like uh, the way that they they structure the 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 events and and the way they run. It's it's kind of like a like a all Japan. Um, it's a, you know it's a you know every match is a war of attrition uh, to see who the who the better competitor is, right? Um, and you know and it's just something about being in that. And, and it's a it's not a very big venue, um, but it's just something about being in that atmosphere, it just makes you just want to just, you know, floor it and just go hard as you can from bell to bell. Um, that's what I really love about that place a lot. Um, and like the, the, the fan base there is, is really good. Uh, actually the, the match that, that I had the injury, uh, was a strap match, uh, that I had against Rip Bison and um, as far as I know, that was the first ever strap match that ever happened in in East Hampton, Massachusetts, ever in pro wrestling there, which was which was really cool. And you know, not only that, you know, usually when I was making those trips too, I, I would also do wrestling open as well because uh, you know they uh, grind, uh, pro wrestling grind would usually run on Friday nights, uh, and then you know wrestling opens every Thursday. Um, so, you know, I would get to get up there too. And that, that would also help, uh, I think help furthermore, get me exposure to that area and to the wider audience of IWTV. Um, so it's, you know, that I felt like, uh, going up there on those, on those shots were, were a boost for me. You also appeared for AEW last year where you celebrated your debut uh, in Lexington against uh, Big Bill. How special was this for you, especially given that this was in your home state of Kentucky? Um, it was a pretty big deal. My my dad, uh, you know, where where the where the, the arena is, it's called Rupp Arena in Lexington. Um, it's, uh, you know, college basketball is really big in this state. Um, and University of Kentucky is is probably one of the most well-known college basketball uh, teams in, in the United States. And my dad's been a diehard fan of them, you know, I, for most of his life. So uh, it was, it, it meant a lot to me that I got to, I got to wrestle in that building where they play basketball and, you know, and telling them that um, I think it really excited them a lot. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it's pretty crazy too, how that went down. Like I didn't really get a, a lot of time, uh, cause I was actually going to be doing something else. And, uh, and then they, they pulled me to the side, uh, maybe about 30 minutes, 45 minutes or so before I was to, to go to the ring. And, uh, you know, and they, they gave me, they gave me that match. Um, yeah, it was, re- it was really a special deal to be, to be on national television. Like that's, that's never happened for me before. Um, when I broke my, when I, when I did have a broken thumb, I actually did get a, get reached out to by WWE about doing extra stuff, but I wouldn't have passed uh, the physical part, but due to my injury. So, um, and that never came back around again. And like, and other than that, you know, I've only had like a dark match at ring of honor, um, back in, uh, 2017, um, when it was still owned by, you know, Sinclair broadcasting corporation. Uh, so it, you know, it was really cool to, to, you know, finally make it on national television even if it was for a short time, you know, just to, just to experience that was, uh, was definitely a career highlight for me. I think another highlight and another debut that you celebrated this year uh, was at the 16 karat gold weekends from WXW here in Germany, um, where you appeared at WXW Wheel of Wrestling Wildcard Edition on March 9th. I know that you told me before that you always like dreamed of going to WXW and with this in mind, what are your thoughts on We Love Wrestling Wildcard Edition and on your match against Mark Empire? Man, what an incredible weekend and just overall experience for me. 
Um, I have, you know, I, you know, I know we've spoke before, like I, I've never, you know, I've never been to, to Germany nor Europe, um, you know, ever. Uh, this was my first time in my entire life, uh, coming over. And, uh, you know, I've, I have paid attention to WXW for, for a very long time. Um, it's uh, especially amongst wrestling, the the independent wrestling world, as far as the wrestlers and the fans. Uh, WXW is pretty well known here in the United States. Um, so uh, to to get over there and be a part of that um, was a, was a huge highlight for me. Like I've, I think WXW has been on my radar for at least twelve years. You know, wanting to be there. Um, and to to finally to finally do it and as, as a bucket list for me um and uh the the fan the fan base in germany is is so much different than the us and, and in a very good way um uh, just the the energy that that was in that you know in that in Turban hall the entire weekend was just electric to me I mean, even, even, even though it was a smaller space, even inner circle, like it was, you know, I think it was only like a hundred people, right. That's usually what they fit in there. And I mean, it felt like a thousand with the, with the kind of energy that, that the fans were bringing, um, to us. Um, I really, you know, uh, Mark empires, uh, man, he's huge, <laughs> big guy. Um, I, uh, I felt that, uh, I felt that we really brought it to each other out there, you know, um, in in the match. Um, I felt like it was a very hard hitting match. Um, and you know, I, I think Mark, I think, uh, Mark's got, got some potential to really, to really do some good things in his career. Um, but overall, like the, it, like it, it, it still didn't seem like it happened to me. Um, you know, even when I, when I got back to America, um, it just it took a few days for it to set in that it actually happened but uh but i it's definitely one of the biggest highlights of my career um your food is amazing <laughs> so much better than here <laughs> um and uh l- luckily luckily uh thomas shire saved me a corny bar last night in st louis <laughs> From the wrestlers who were a part of We Love Wrestling Wildcard Edition, you were the one with the most experience. Did knowing this make this whole experience feel extra special for you? I think so, yeah. Um, it, uh, I, I felt like um, having that kind of experience, I felt like um, I, I, was, I, I felt like I was treated with a lot of, res- with a lot of respect and, and regard you know, amongst everyone. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, it, it was, it was good to, to, you know, I think I, Mark empire, I, I, I've been around a little, you know, a good deal longer than him, but it was, um, I really enjoy, I, I really enjoy working with the younger talent a lot. You know, that's, uh, that's something I've always liked to do, um, and, and try and help where I can. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, I just, I felt I felt like uh, it's kind of like a badge of honor, almost having that kind of experience and being invited over. After you returned to the United States, you did your first wrestling seminar in Birmingham, Alabama, on March twenty fourth. How did this feel for you, and how did you prepare for something like this? Is this something you always wanted to do? Um, yeah, it was something I always wanted to do, but um, as uh, but I never felt like I was uh. You know, sometimes with with wrestlers, you know, they with the seminar thing. Like, I guess maybe I just I've always wanted to do it, but I just didn't feel worthy of it. I guess maybe because, you know, I I didn't I never you know I never signed a big time TV contract or you know I didn't make a million dollars. So you know, I kind of felt like um, for a long time I really wasn't worthy of doing one until I was asked. Um, you know, I was asked by the manager, by the management at retinal. And, um, I even did one just before I went to Germany. My, actually my retinal reached out to me first, but then a week later, uh, Scott Hensley reached out to me and I actually, my very first one was at the SCI rumble weekend. Um, and then as far as like to prepare for it, um, I, I just, I mostly took a lot of things that I learned, um, uh, from, from seminars and tryouts and, and training with veterans and just kind of compiling 
a structure off of that um, to uh, to present to to the to the attendees of the seminar as far as a curriculum. Speaking of things um, you did after your return, last weekend was a very busy weekend for you. First of all, you had a match on Saturday, uh, March twenty third, against ATM at TWE Nihilism. What are your thoughts on this match? Um, uh, ATM is a is a younger talent. Um, he has not been he hasn't been wrestling for for very long. Um, he's a he's St. Louis based. Um, he's he's out of the uh, there's a wrestling school there called the Forge. Um, it's ran by um, Cam Jackson, I think Mike Outlaw and uh, and uh, Jake P or Warhorse Jake Parnell. Um, they they run that school and uh, ATM is a, has been has been uh, training there for quite some time. Um, I think he's another younger guy with a lot of with a lot of potential. He's got a really good upside to him. Um, and and I mean the match as far as for what it was, like it was something I really enjoyed a good deal as far as the the pacing, the timing of everything. Um, you know, I, I I did enjoy that match. Before Marble will talk to you about what is next for you, my last question would be that one day after your. TWE show, you had a match at Retinal Wrestling, Symphony of Destruction, where you defeated Big Dave to become the first ever Retinal Pro Heavyweight Champion. What or how did winning this title feel and what did winning this title mean to you? You know, it, uh, winning the title meant, meant, uh, meant a very good deal to me. Um, you know, just like the, the guys that kind of helped form Retinal, um, you know, um, You know uh, Brian Brian Maxwell. You know he's a promoter, but you also had uh, like Kerry Awful and Nick Iggy. They they've had a pretty big part of it. Uh, the Carnies, uh, which um, I I mentored both of them uh, when they first broke into the professional wrestling business over a decade ago. Um, so to to be a part of something like that, and for them to want. And for them to want me to be their guy, you know, like, um, that's, that's something that, that I hold, I hold pretty dear. And, you know, it's a, it's a job I don't take lightly. I take it very seriously. Um, but so, yeah, I consider it an honor. Um, you know, and then I think, uh, you know, Dave, um, you know, I, uh, as far as big Dave, I put him, I felt like I put him to the test and, uh, I think he, he rose to the occasion. I mean, we, uh, We went out there and we went very, we went pretty hard um, from bell to bell, and um, you know I I think through that I think you know you know I think Dave, Dave could Dave's got big upside to him as well. Um, there's a lot of young talent out there that does, but uh, but as far as being in there with Dave, I think he's got a big upside, a lot of potential, and um, he he showed me he had a lot of grit on that day. As we heard today, you already rested in a lot of different promotions and regions. Are there still certain regions or promotions where you would like to wrestle both nationally and internationally? And also, what are your next goals in general? Um, as far as like uh, nationally, um, really the only the, the only region I haven't really been to uh, would probably be the West Coast. Um, that's definitely somewhere I would like to be. There's a lot of great promotions there. I mean, you got You got Prestige, you got Defy, uh, you got West Coast Pro. Um, there's a, you know, it's it's really uh, developed there. I think in the last few years, it's really boomed. Um, I would like to go back to Texas. Um, you know, I, I haven't been to Texas in a long time. Um, I was kind of a, I, I've only been in there once, and that was through uh, that was through the NWA. Uh, that was way before you know Billy Corgan bought it when there was still like an affiliate program where you had you know, NWA affiliate promotions all through the country and other parts of the world. Um, Japan's always been the number one goal for me throughout my career. Um, so if I could, if I could ever get an opportunity there, that would, you know, that would be like a true dream come true. Um, I, I mean, I want to be everywhere. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd love to be back at WXW again. Um, I'd love to be at Rev Pro or Progress, um, you know, NOAA, All Japan, uh, you know, like those places like that. That's, I feel, you know, that's where the best in the world are. Um, and that's, that's where I want to be because 
not only to get better, but just to just to see where I am as a as a wrestler too. You know, being being in the in the ring with uh, cal with the caliber of talent that those promotions hold. On April April the thirteenth, you will have a special match. You will face Aaron Wade in TWE in a match that is promoted as the final fight. No ropes, no rules, one winner. What are your thoughts on this match? I think this match is gonna it's gonna be pretty brutal. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I, th I think the, the whole, the whole storyline, you know, throughout the whole time between Aaron and I, we've, we've really, you know, we've, we, I feel like we've amped it up each match. So I think here it's probably going to get pretty crazy. Um, which I'm, you know, I'm really looking forward to as far as like, uh, no, no ropes or anything like that. Never, I've never done a match like that before. And in, in my 21 years, so um, that's another exciting part is that it's, it's something brand new and something I've never done before. Um, and you know, they kind of, when, it, when you come across something like that, it kind of gives you a little bit of extra excitement for it. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna, um, yeah, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be an ass beater. <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, Derek, that's it. We are at the end of the interview and as always the stage is yours. You can plug and promote anything you want. All right. Awesome. Uh, as far as uh, social media, um, on Instagram, it's just Derek dot Neil. Um, and on Twitter, it's at Derek Neil 91. Um, I also have a uh, Facebook page, Derek Neil official and, uh, my pro wrestling tea store. You can just search me up uh, on pro wrestling tees, uh, dot com under the Kings road slayer and it should pull up my store. Okay. Thank you very much for coming on the show. It was a very cool interview. I really liked it because I started rest, uh, watching US Independent Wrestling in 2001. For, for me, it was like a, going back the memory lane. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and also our whole team saw you live at WXW and we really enjoyed your match against Mark Empire. So thanks again very, uh, very much for coming on the show tonight. Yeah, thank you, Morbo. I appreciate it a lot. Um, yeah, uh, Germany was, oh my God, it was just such a blast. I wish I could have stayed longer. <laughs> I really enjoyed it over there. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, so, so you've really been fought. You've been following indie wrestling since 01. Yes. Since 2001. Wow. Man, that's a long time. Yeah. That's a long time, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good. And like, I really appreciate you guys too. Cause you guys actually do homework on people, you know, and, and ask about their about their careers and things like it shows that you guys take pride in what you do thank and you i really appreciate that and i also want to say thank you as always to you Mo, as always to you florian and especially to you derek thank you very much for taking the time to be on our show today and as mobile already said uh, we really enjoyed watching you uh at wxw i really enjoyed watching you at twe and As always, also a big thank you to all our listeners and I hope you will listen to us in the future again. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>